Squad, what's happening? It's your boy Knockout360 with another video for you guys. So as you can tell, I'm in the car that makes this a car vlog. You already know how it's going down when I come around. Let's go ahead and get into it, man. So first things first, I want to thank each and every last one of my new subscribers, my new viewers for tuning in. Uh, car content, car shows, car meets, car reviews, car videos, anything and everything car related happens on this channel. So if you're into that, make sure that you stick around, right? Or you do not want to miss what we got planned, right? Or whenever this virus situation is over so that we can get back to normal life. Uh, for everyone else, make sure you hit that subscription button and that notification bell so that you know what's coming out and when it's coming out right so let's go ahead and get into it man let's go ahead and get to the nitty-gritty man i know a lot of you guys have probably been wanting to know i think i've had a, quite a few questions in my dms as well as my comments how much did i pay for my 2020 dodge charger scat pack wide body you feel me um well, let's go ahead and get into it, man. So first and foremost, let me preface by kind of giving you guys a backstory of where I came from in case this is your first video uh, on my channel. 2015 Dodge Charger Rally Package. Obviously, it's a V6. I financed it. Um, I was paying right at $410 a month for that particular car. Now, if you know anything about that car, and you should know because I told you guys uh, in the videos back in the day, that car was fully loaded. As fully loaded as a V6 could have came, right? Leather seats. Uh, heated and cooled front seats, rear seats, um, heated and cooled uh, steering wheel or heated with steering wheel. I had the 20 inch rims, the performance tires, well, what they call performance tires, 245s all the way around. Uh, I had the sunroof, I had the Beats audio, I had the 8.4 inch touchscreen, and I had navigation. Um, and I had the Beats sub in the trunk, right? Um, white headlights, white, you know, fog lights, the whole nine. So that car was fully loaded, right? Completely fully loaded to the teeth and I was paying for it. I probably could have got that car with just the essentials for much less than that. Probably could have been paying somewhere in the realm of like 330, 315 had I not had on all the add-ons and all the essentials. But I will admit it was nice having those things, right? It was nice having a sunroof. It was nice having, uh, the Beats audio, which they don't put in Dodge cars anymore. Um, it was nice having what, you know, the heated and cooled, uh, all that good stuff. Right. Um, so having that car and just having that car, as long as I had it since 2015, I just traded, traded it in, uh, recently here. If there's one thing that I came to the realization is that I don't need a lot of that BS that was in that car. I don't need a lot of the mess that came in that car. And I say that to say, with it being a four door car, obviously it comes with the back seat. I can count on my hand, on my left hand, on one hand, how many times I actually had um, people in my car. And why that's relevant is because the whole rear heated seats, the whole rear cooled seats, not a necessity whatsoever. Um, as far as the sunroof is concerned, don't get me wrong, I would bang the sunroof. Um, hold on, that's a. That's a wasp right there. We're not doing that. Oh, we're not doing that. As far as um, the sunroof is concerned, I would use the sunroof here, here and there. Um, I didn't use it all the time. Certainly did, didn't use it every single day. It was not a necessity in any sense of the word. Um, so with that being said, I really didn't need that. Uh, the performance tires, performance wheels, that was all good stuff. I, I definitely wanted that. It made the car look good. It, it, even though it was a V6, it gave it that, you know, RT Hemi look. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people didn't know that it was a V6 aside from looking at the badges or whatever on the back. So, you know, sitting down and kind of taking things into consideration, what made sense and what was important to me was the car itself, right? I want the Hemi. I want the 6.4 liter Hemi. I want all the performance modifications or all the performance upgrades that come with the Scat Pack. And we can kind of skip on some of the interior stuff, right? So let me go over basically what I'm looking at as far as uh, my car is concerned currently, the 2020 Dodge Charger Scat Pack wide body. So the base price for this particular car is $39,995. You feel me? Um, what do I have? I have the pitch black exterior paint, uh, black interior, cloth performance seats with the B logo. So they are cloth seats. They're not leather and they're not um, uh, uh, Alcantara or whatever the case may be. Suede, I'm sorry. I didn't want leather. I really did not want leather. I had leather in my previous car and they begin to crack. And once your leather starts to crack, there's no saving it aside from getting it fixed. And not to mention you have to condition it. There's a lot of upkeep when you have a leather car. 
particularly when your leather car is your daily driver and you're constantly putting your butt in there, hopping in and out. I had cracks all over the uh, door. I had cracks on the center console. My, st my seat was starting to crack and I just didn't want to deal with that in my new car. I wanted to try something else. I didn't want the suede because I'm just not familiar with, you know, how clean suede stays. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then once again, the suede came with the suede leather combination, which I didn't want. So I didn't want leather seats or anything like that. Um, I did want a sunroof. I'll be honest with you. That's probably the only regret that I do have not getting it um, in this car is the sunroof. But given the circumstances, kind of my situation or whatever the case may be, let me roll the window down, but I'm getting hot. But my particular circumstance was I wanted this car. I didn't order it. Um, I didn't put in a special request for it because at the time there were some things going on. And basically the dealership was saying they're not even taking pre-orders at that time. But I had someone that was actively looking for this car, right? The wide body. You guys know that. I've been talking to you guys for the wide body probably the last year, real talk. So this particular lady uh, I was working with um, on a month-to-month, week-to-week -week basis as far as looking for this car. Two cars or two wide bodies came to the lot. It was this black one and it was a white one. The white one was fully loaded. Pretty much a lot of the things that I didn't want. It had the leather seats. It had the sunroof. It had the... Um, um, what else did it have? It had basically a bunch of stuff that realistically speaking, I just didn't need to keep it real with you. I didn't need all of that stuff. And I certainly didn't need to be paying for it on a monthly basis for that stuff. And my biggest thing was I wanted the power. I wanted the look. What you're going to get with these cars, it doesn't matter what color you get, it doesn't matter what trim you look, you get, these cars are going to look dope regardless, straight, real talk. Um, I wanted the power, I wanted the look on the exterior, the interior was not so much of a concern of mine, because the 8.4 inch Uconnect was all that I needed as far as the interior is concerned, right? That comes with your CarPlay, that comes with your Google Maps, your Waze, all that stuff, right? And then of course your music, this particular car came with Alpine uh, stereo which surprisingly sounds pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I think it's actually a little bit louder than the Beats. Uh, not nearly as much bass or not quite as much bass because the Beats came with the eight inch sub in the back. So it doesn't have as much bass, but it does sound a little bit, um, it actually sounds louder and it actually sounds clearer, which kind of is to be expected. If you know anything about Beats, you know they're real bass heavy or whatever. So the sound system sounds great. The Alpine stereo sounds great in this car, no cap. Um, Performance wise, anything that a 6.4 liter has, mine came with, with the addition of the SRT, I guess, package or whatever the case may be. So I've got the SRT uh, suspension, the dampening system. I've got SRT pages, SRT dashboard, track mode, uh, sport mode, eco mode. Um, I've also got the performance pages. Um, of course, with the Scat Pack wide body, there is that Scat Pack wide body option that you're paying $6,000 for that comes with the six piston Brembo brakes up front, performance shift indicator, um, let's see here, flat bottom steering wheel, which mine comes with, 305, 305 uh, all performance Pirelli P0 tires all the way around, 20 inch devil rims um, all the way around, adaptive dampening system suspension, which is what we were talking about, wide body competition suspension, which, um, you know, uh, is in the car, whatever the case may be. So with that being said, basically what I'm saying when I uh, kind of go down the list there is um, I've got all the performance modifications that any car, that any Dodge Charger SRT can have without being a Hellcat. You feel what I'm saying? So anything that your car has, my car has it too. Line lock, launch mode, I got all of that in this particular car, right? So there's a lot that doesn't meet the eye. And I'll say that to say, there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood that you guys just aren't seeing. Uh, when you sit in the car, it is all cloth. Like I said, I don't have my sunroof. Once again, it just didn't make sense financially to go out and spend that kind of money on something like that uh, when I didn't need it. Like I said, with my 2015, I had four or five times in my life where I had a car full of people, right? People in the back seat. So all of that irrelevant additions and extra stuff and this set and quote unquote necessities that the dealership loves to throw at you was not a necessity. And surprisingly, that really did cut down on the price. So I told you that the base price was $39,995. When you add on the wide body kit, that brings the price to a total of $47,490, right? So uh, realistically speaking, I got this 2020 Dodge Charger Scat Pack wide body, 
for $47,490. Now, you know, of course, that's not the walking out the door price. The walking out the door price, if I'm not mistaken, I don't have my paperwork in front of me, but if I'm not mistaken, the walking out the door price was probably around 52, 53,000, right? So let's say I got this 2020 Dodge Charger wide body for 52, let's say on a, a high end of 53,000, right? So that's the walking out the door price. If you ask me for what I'm getting in this car, 100%, you're asking me, I believe that that was a hell of a deal. And that's ultimately why I could not pass up this deal when I went to the dealership. Because giving you guys some backstory on the whole process, um, so Saturday, uh, this this car came off the truck, fresh on a lot. It was this car, and like I said, it was a white one. The white one was fully loaded. They didn't even have the white one um, in, the, in the, the showroom floor. It's not really the showroom floor, it's right outside of the showroom, but it was right there is what I'm saying. The white one was somewhere in the back or whatever. They had the black one up there. So uh, my homegirl hits me. She works at the dealership. She's the one that's been putting in the work. Um, yep, here, come, here comes that that wasp again. I'm not I'm not messing with you. But uh, she hit me up, and she was the one that was working at the dealership, and she was the one that was doing the due diligence as far as looking for this car all over the city, seeing if any Dodge lots or or dealerships had this particular car in stock, which none of them did. But as soon as this one and another one came off the lot, uh, came off the truck onto her lot. She gave me a call immediately. So the ship, the, the the car came off the truck on Saturday. She hit my phone Saturday night and said, we've got them. We've got two wide bodies up here. You need to come see them. Make an appointment ASAP. So I made an appointment that Monday. So we're talking about Saturday, Sunday. That Monday, I went up there. I went up there strictly with the intention of looking. I didn't bring no down payment money. I didn't bring no paperwork as far as my old charger was concerned. Like no cap. I went up there just to look. Um, I ended up looking. And when she started talking about the price and when she started talking about what we could get your monthly payments down to, which was literally within my realm, like that's exactly what I wanted. I went crazy. I was like, you know, I'm keeping real with you. This is a dream come true. I mean, even the finance manager came out and he was like, what would it take for us to get you in this car? Now, I don't know if it was the coronavirus. I don't know if it was maybe how new this car was. I don't know if it was, you know, the Dodge Power Dollar deals and all that stuff. I don't know if it was all that stuff, but they seem really motivated and aggressive as far as getting, um, oh, see, here come that wasp again, as far as getting this particular car off the lot. They wanted to get this car off the lot. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why they were so motivated, but they wanted to get this car off the lot. I don't know if it was because it's one of those things where given the time frame that people were just not buying muscle cars maybe during this time frame just because of like what's been going on or whatever the case may be uh i think i can roll the window down a little bit as you can tell i don't like bees at all i don't like bees i damn sure don't like wasps i don't like none of that stuff you know what i'm saying anything that can sting me and kill me i'm not feeling but um they were really motivated to get this car off the lot, needless to say. The finance manager, he came out the little, you know what I'm saying, the middle area where all the finance dudes sit. And he came and sat down with me and he said, uh, sat down with myself and the salesperson. And he was like, yo, what would it take for me to get you in this car? Real talk. You bought your first car from us. Um, what would it take to get you in this car? And I told him my number. He went back. He said, OK. I was like, wow. Um so we started talking about my old car and I said, you know, this is my old Charger. It's a 2015 fully loaded Dodge Charger Rally. It's got a little over 100,000 miles. I'm looking at uh, I'm not I'm not trading that car in unless I can get at least 15 for it. You know what I'm saying? 15,000, which was a high number. And, you know, like when you go and do negotiations, you always start high and then work your way low. Um or, you know, when, whenever you're negotiating your price for what you're paying, you start low and work your way up. But whenever you're negotiating your trade in, you start high and you work your way low. So I said, uh, you know, I, I, I know for a fact that this car is worth like uh, at least uh, 16,000, I'll say 15,000. Now, of course, Kelly Blue Book, Blue, Blue Book said that the car was worth realistically no more than 11 or 12,000. I went with 15 just because 15 sounded good in my head. So I said 15. Um and of course, based on my payments at the time, I was, uh, I, I guess the, the, I wasn't upside down, if that makes sense. A lot of people trade their cars in and they're upside down on the pavement. In other words, they still owe money. Um, when you do the, uh, the actual value for the car and what you owe, what you owe is a lot more than a value. So in other words, you're upside down, you know what I'm saying? Hypothetically speaking, most people like 
if they owe twenty thousand dollars on a car and their car is only worth fifteen thousand, you're upside down five thousand. So if you decide that you want to trade your car in, that five thousand gets tacked on to the new uh, car's payment or whatever the case may be. That wasn't the case for me. My car was actually, as far as my payments were concerned, they were paid down much, much more than what the car was worth. So needless to say, um, I actually came out of that deal with, um, if I'm not mistaken, $4,000 that I didn't owe. How do I don't want to say this? So basically, my car was worth $4,000 more than my actual um, payment was. If that My car was worth more $4,000 more than what I had actually uh, paid down or whatever the case may be. So that's $4,000 on top of the two G's that I put down in cash. So that's $6,000 right there um, that I put down as a down payment, my trade in and my actual cash. So out of my pocket, I only came out of my pocket with two G's. You feel what I'm saying? Two G's out of my pocket and then 4,000 for the trade in, that's six G's total right there. And this act, this no, this, that, this next part guys, is crucial credit is king credit is absolutely king it doesn't matter what kind of if you got cash where you can just go in a dealership and drop fifty thousand on the car that's one thing if you don't and you're you know a relatively average guy like your boy um credit is king credit is absolutely king i can honestly say that my credit score at the time i haven't looked since i bought this thing i'm sure it's probably dropped but my credit score at the time no cap was I want to say 738, 740, something like that, 742. Needless to say, I was what you would consider tier one uh, financing. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm going to get the best rate possible for financing a car, and I'm going to have a little more latitude when it comes to negotiating my price. If you go in there with the 530 or 515, I'm not put, I'm not you know making fun of you guys, but they're not negotiating anything with you. Like whatever you get or whatever they give you is what you get. And that's just what it is. I went in there with the credit score, like I said, around 735, 741, something like that in that range. I don't remember. Um, but uh, so that was the thing. I went in there with that. I went in there with $6,000 worth of down payment on top. And basically I was, I was motivated, but I wasn't the type of motivator where I have to have a car today. Uh, I was willing to walk out. So needless to say, after all that, after talking the price, and then like I said, the base price was $39,995. The total price was $47,490. And out the door, I think that came out to, like I said, $52,53. All in all, after doing the math and working it down, negotiating, I went in there at, literally right after I got off of work, I went in there at, I had an appointment at 445. I didn't leave until 930. That's how long it took with us uh, negotiating, going back and forth, test driving the car, looking in the car, the whole process. You guys already know how long it takes to buy a car these days. It's really not an in and out type of process. So after all of that, the down payment, $6,000, which is 4,000 for the trade in, 2,000 in cash. Um, and then of course having relatively good credit, I'm not gonna say perfect credit because I think perfect is like 800 or something like that, something ridiculous. Um, I was able to get my monthly payment down, no cap for a 2020 Dodge Charger Scat Pack wide body. I was able to get my payment down to $578, if I'm not mistaken. $578 is what I'm paying on a monthly basis right now. Um, the reason that that is good, no cap, I, I gotta stop saying that. The reason that that is good is because in my previous charger, I was paying 410 with this one, I'm paying five seventy eight. So I'm literally only paying one hundred and sixty dollars more for this than I was for my V six, which is a great deal because I went from a V six to a six point four liter V eight. You feel what I'm saying? A six point four liter uh, uh, naturally aspirated V eight. Naturally aspirated, right? This isn't a turbo charge, a supercharged. I'm sorry. Now, like I said, these guys were motivated to get this car off the lot. I can't sit here and say that this deal is something that's attainable for everyone else out there, $578. But the fact that I knew that uh, the salesman or saleswoman, she knew for a fact that I had been looking for this car probably the last two years. I talked to her and met her years ago and I asked her about this car back then. And she said she hadn't heard anything of it. I said, I want to be the first person that you talk to when you do hear something of it. Um, so that coupled with the fact that they were extremely motivated Coupled with the fact that this is not like your fully loaded leather Alcantara suede red sunroof uh, uh, Beats audio package 
coupled with the fact that my previous car, uh, the value was so good, I kept it up really well. That's another important thing. Take care of your car because in the long run, it could benefit you. Um, that coupled with good credit, uh, good driving report and all that stuff, that all, uh, all of that uh, together is what allows me to have this car for five seventy eight a month. Um, my insurance, I'm not lying to you guys. My insurance prior to buying this particular car, uh, my insurance, I was paying, um, $115. I'm with, uh, I don't know if I should tell you guys that I'm not going to tell you, but with my previous car, I was paying 110, uh, with this new scat pack, I'm paying 150, uh, literally 152, 151, something like that. 150 nonetheless. So my insurance literally only went up 35, 40 bucks too. So realistically speaking, when you add everything up with the new car payment, with the new insurance, I'm paying, um, let's see here, maybe 200 bucks more a month for this than I was my previous V6. And I say that to say with my V6, I was paying 410 with this, I'm paying 578. So that's $160. Um, with my V6, the insurance payment was 110, 115. With this, it is 150, uh, 148, 152, something like that. I have to check again. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's the reason that this kind of came as suddenly as it came. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's one of those things where I was talking to you guys about it one day and then the next day I had it. Guys, I'm going to try to finish this video real quick. My camera's starting to overheat. So bottom line, 2020 Dodge Charger Scat Pack Wide Body, I'm paying $578 a month for. I am financing it. Uh, and my insurance payment is right at $152, $53, right? If there's anything that can be taken away from this process is that credit is king. Make sure you check, keep your credit score on point, guys. Real talk. You want to buy these nice cars. These cars are expensive. Dodge or not, they're expensive. And credit is king. Sometimes if your credit is on point, your cash may not be, they'll work with you. They'll finagle with you. They'll negotiate with you. So credit is king. Take care of your property right now, your V6s, your V8s, whatever you're driving. Take care of them because there will come a time when it's time to trade them in or sell them or whatever the case may be. And then, of course, you want to get as much on your return, as much in return on your investment as possible. And thirdly, guys, I, you know, sometimes it's best to know people, resources. That sales lady, she helped me out so much beyond belief. If you're in Charlotte, go to Independence, uh, care for Dodge Jeep Independence speak with Bailey Butler. Bailey Butler, she helped me out. She worked your boy real good as far as the numbers are concerned. Talk to her. She'll get you square. Uh, so credit, you know what I'm saying? Taking care of your investment and resources. That's how I got into my car for what I got into my car with, right? So as always, guys, like, subscribe, comment. It's been your boy, Knockout360. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.